Welcome back, everyone, to Pig's Ear Interview here at the Tojo Dojo, one of the only places where we're talking about what we've been playing and what we've been watching. I'm Mike Stuff, joined by Riku Rose. How you been this week? I'm good, thanks, mate. You? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, before we continue, make sure to like and subscribe for the channel. And uh, if you haven't checked us out yet, uh, check us out for the previous episodes for all the hot games and shows that we've been checking out as of late. Uh, so this week, we're going to be talking about... The Last of Us show that just wrapped up, as well as <laughs> a show 40 years in the making, History of the World, Part 2. No one thought that I w- uh, that would ever come up. So, um, And then as I was telling you before we started, I'm in the middle of watching a few other shows that I'll eventually talk about. Some competing franchises, uh, Mandalorian and Picard going on right now, all withhold my judgment until they're finished but <laughs> they, we will finally settle the star trek versus star wars mm-hmm. debate once and for all with the greatest uh examples of <laughs> of content between the two <laughs> this is what everyone wanted for sure <laughs> you know actually really quick it is funny because uh the other day at work someone was asking if i'd started watching uh mandalorian and a few people i work with know i really like star trek but then I was telling them, like, yeah, I'm checking that out. But then I'm also watching the new Star Trek show. And they're like, what? <laughs> There's Star Trek going on? <laughs> like, just people have no yeah. idea <laughs> that it's happening. <laughs> Not many people have Paramount+. Plus. I know. It's 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 a shame. I will say they're getting some good stuff lately. But uh, look, I, I, I know I'm in the minority here for people to give a shit. They get some good stuff <laughs> and they have the Halo show. Yeah, let's... I mean, I didn't watch it yet, but uh, you know, let's not talk about it. <laughs> I've heard not great things. <laughs> well, you our told previous me. episode where I discussed that. <laughs> Let's see, I've already forgotten about it. See, that's how it just completely went over. Uh, but anyways, so actually speaking of which, so for video game related shows, I'll uh, turn it over to you to start talking about The Last of Us. Yes, I watched the HBO show The Last of Us uh, mm-hmm. based on the hit video game. Mm-hmm. Which, I don't know how much you actually like those games. I know you've played them. Oh, I enjoy them quite a bit. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Know, like they're some of my favorites. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I mean, as we've talked before, I think both of us definitely like the more story focused types of games, and mm-hmm. uh, I definitely, I mean, Na- Naughty Dog is like at the top of their game, of course. Like, it, yeah, I have a, I have a good time when I play them for sure. Yeah, that, so I can't say like I'm surprised about this because like the moment I saw HBO, there's normally such like a quality marker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For HBO, that you kind of expect it to be good, yeah. Um, and also the fact that this this show is weird because it's not your usual adaptation. Okay, because it is literally a one for one. Now, normally okay. when they adapt a video game, <clears throat> bec- it, it's hard to describe. But like Sonic, you can't. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> you can't look at that the original game and go, right, this is how we're going to turn that into a movie. You sure. can't take liberties with that, right? Yeah. Whereas The Last of Us game, you can look at that and go, well, let's just shoot that scene for scene as is because it already looks like a movie or a TV show, right? Practically. Yeah, I don't know if necessarily like Neil Druckmann had that in mind specifically, but it's clear that it was made to be a, like a cinematic experience. Yeah, and that's why I sort of said at the beginning of the show, I watched like the first two episodes, it was a bit weird to watch because like mm-hmm. I've played the games mm-hmm. and it, it doesn't feel that exciting. I saw a lot of people online like, oh, this is great, one of the best shows ever, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like... I just feel like I'm watching something I've already experienced. Okay. Um, that was like the first two episodes, and then the third episode goes in a completely different direction. Well, so, different direction, or more just like explore something that was only like briefly touched upon in the game, or briefly touched upon, but also different. Okay. Okay. Like so, the entire third episode is based on a character you briefly meet in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it sh- but it does take li- it does change the story about that character, and I okay. actually think it's for the better. Cool. Okay. Uh, it's really good. It's one of the best episodes of television I've ever seen. <laughs> oh damn! All right. Yeah, yeah. It it really is like up there with 
you know, like the Battle of the Bastards in Game of Thrones. You never watched Game of Thrones. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to take your word on that one. <laughs> you know, the, 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 everyone always talks about, like, you know, Ozzy Mandez, like, Breaking Bad as one of them. Sure, sure, stories. sure. You know, I, yeah. I seriously think it is up there. Okay, just in, in terms like, of, like, the storytelling or, like, the, yeah, the way it's shot it, or... I've heard it described as, like, the first five minutes of Up spread over an hour. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, that, and then, for the most part, yeah, after that point, they start to dig more into certain characters and certain events mm-hmm. and flesh it out a bit more. Which okay. My wife was like, "Yeah, you can't do that in a video game." I'm like, "You can take as long as you want in a video game. You're not gonna like." It. I'm like it's truly, truly. Have you TV played Persona show. Five? There's a hundred plus hours of video game. <laughs> like in a TV show, you got to keep it to 45 minutes because there's another show on after. Sure. Video game can be as long as you like. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, mm-hmm. But that's it. Is there is a few instances where I think the game did it better. Still okay. Mm-hmm. Um, without spoiling it, uh, there's a part in the game where Joel gets hurt. Mm-hmm. That's all I'll say. Okay. In the show, it's not done very dramatically. It's very much oh, this happened. Whereas in the game, you play an entire sequence mm-hmm. of that. And uh, and this sorry, just really quick. This is just essentially the first season, or sorry, the, this first season is the first game, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you say Joel gets hurt. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know what you're thinking. But like, okay. No spoilers, but he gets he gets hurt in the first game. Sure, sure, okay. Right, and there's a one of my favorite parts of that game was where it happens, right? Sure, sure. Um, and I I just think they kind of missed the way they did. It, it was towards the end of the episode. It felt very mm-hmm. rushed. Um, okay. But I I enjoyed this overall. It was really good. It's a good entryway because a lot of people are not going to sit there and play The Last of Us. Well, I think I may have told you right after it premiered, and and I think, well, just for everyone else, I haven't watched the show yet. I do intend to at some point, but I've played both of the games, of course. But I think I mentioned to this to you when the first episode premiered that I talked to a few people at work who had mentioned this to me. And they're like, oh, I'm checking out the, the Last of Us show. Have you watched it? And I'm like, no, I haven't, but I've played both of the games. And a couple people were like, oh, this is a video game? And yeah. from my understanding, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't the show open with a giant PlayStation Studios logo on it no. or something like that? Or no? no, it doesn't. Oh, okay. I thought they were, it would say like PlayStation Studios. Okay, maybe I'm mistaken then. Okay, I think it never might mind. do that like in the after credits or something. Or ma- maybe but, that's what it is. Okay. Um, during like the credit scene i think it says something like based on the game by naughty dog okay i I figured it would have mentioned it somewhere but it is but yeah i did find it weird the lack of like playstation branding because if you're sony surely you'd want because they're going into like movies and tv shows quite hardcore now right and you'd it seems like they'd want to establish themselves i would have thought like you know after the hbo like logo that Mm -hmm. is iconic you'd maybe get like a little Two second PlayStation Studios or something like that. Well, because that's what they're doing on some of the games. It's almost like that MCU intro where it's mm-hmm. like all the characters coming up and like a fancy logo. Uh, I know that like for the games they do that. I w- yeah, I would have been. But I did that in the uh, Uncharted yeah. movie as well. Right. Well, quite, yeah, that's. Yeah. I, I mean, I'd say it's quite bizarre, but at the end of the day, of course it is. Like it's going to happen. But I was sitting in the movie theater watching Uncharted, and you're like, "Oh, that's Astro Bot and Ratchet and Clank." <laughs> <It's, you know, laughs> Like, wait a minute. It was like when I saw the Sonic movie and the Sega logo came mm-hmm. up, and you're like, that's Crazy Taxi and shit. Right. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's happening. The universe is colliding. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it is funny, though. Like I said, when I talked to a few people, they uh, they just didn't realize it. And I also have to like stop myself from spoiling anything, too, because I w- once again, I'm going to try my best not to spoil anything spe- specific, especially if you haven't played the second game. But someone was talking about Joel, and they were like, oh, I really wonder what's going to happen with Joel in the next season. And I'm like, oh, no, it's happening again. <laughs> yeah, I, I I do think uh, just – I know people had a lot of issues with The Last of Us Part 2. Yeah. At the end of the day, I don't, I don't really care. Yeah. Um, sure. My biggest issue with The Last of Us Part 2 was the fact that it existed because I think it takes away from the ending of The Last of Us Part 1. The first because one I is think, such a great game. <laughs> well, it's just also that ending is one of the greatest endings, I think. Ever. Mm-hmm. 
right? Mm-hmm. And no matter what you do afterwards, no matter what, mm-hmm. I think it takes away from that ending. Sure. Because you're left with that feeling of what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, but you know now, you know what happens afterwards, and it, it kind of takes away from it. Yeah. But overall, I think, uh, was it Pedro Pascal mm-hmm. uh, did a really good job. I didn't know if he'd be able to do it as soon as it was announced because yeah. I'd only ever seen him like in Game of Thrones and uh, his voice in The Mandalorian. <laughs> you see his head every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's just very stoic in that. And like sure. in, in Game of Thrones, he was like playing like a very like aristocrat, like drunk, mm. essentially sex mad guy. <laughs> And I was just like, uh, and I've seen interviews with him and stuff, and I was like, I can't imagine him as like a gruff like Texan who's like mm-hmm. tired of the world. Yeah. And he actually did really well. And uh, I was talking to my wife about it because I said to her, I was like, where, where is he actually from? Is he from Chile? And she said, well, he actually grew up in Texas. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, I never never knew that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you you can tell he like knows about it. And he, he does it so well. He... Uh, Bella Ramsey as Ellie, though, mm-hmm. I don't think she does a bad job. Okay, but I still prefer her performance in the game. Okay, I don't buy her so much as like the tomboyish, like fuck you kind of attitude mm-hmm. in the show as much as I did in the game. Got it, got it. She she does seem like someone who's acting. Well, it's interesting because, like, even once again, I haven't watched it, but just from the trailers, when I look at Pedro Pascal, even though it's not like one for one, I could kind of feel like, okay, you could still get the essence of what that character is. But when I watched, once again, the trailer with her, I guess I, I think I can see what you mean, where it's like, it's, I don't feel that that same presence or like it's exactly one to one, which is fine if it's not exact. I think but she's a good I think she's a good actress. I'm not oh, like, sure. knocking her in that sense. I think it's gonna get very interesting in the next because they've said they're gonna do another season. Okay. And Ellie becomes a lot different between the games, which makes sense because in the original game she's like a 13, 14 year old girl. Mm-hmm. And I believe in the sequel she's essentially like a young adult or a late teenager. It's a decent time jump, I'll say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you can tell in the games, like, she's grown up a bit, mm-hmm. you know, that awkward <clears throat> period in your life and stuff. Um, as I said, I don't think Bella Ramsey's a bad actress. Sure. I just don't think she quite nailed the rebellious team mm-hmm. type attitude. Yeah. she she's, she's felt a little young. Not, not in the way she looks, mm-hmm. but in the way she acted. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe they'll advance her age, I guess, in the next one, and yeah. direct her to be more older, I suppose. But yeah, yeah, I, I I don't know. It could it could have been her as an actor. It could have been the direction for mm-hmm. it. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. But that, but that's only because I'm comparing it to the game. If this was an original show, I'm sure I wouldn't have that complaint. Yeah, um, for sure. But overall, it was really good. Um, I don't think if you played the game, you should be in any rush to watch this mate maybe the odd episode here and there which like the third episode as i said i think is amazing piece of television mm-hmm. but you you know what you're getting going into this this yeah. isn't a video game adaption where you're like oh are they gonna nail this mm-hmm. like what's one ca- like uh the mario movie that's coming out mm-hmm. <laughs> there's still like even though like people like the look of the trailers there's still that part in your brain that goes but it's a video game of action. We'll see. Something <laughs> random, like not right. You know, what, what if they fuck it up? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. no, this, this, this is good. If you, I can't imagine there's going to be many people who play the game, love the game, and go, "Oh, but the adaptation was awful." Well, especially for this first one, because the game itself is pretty much universally loved. Once, once again, the second one, I am, I'm curious though if they're gonna. I doubt they're going to change the story. I don't think that would be in their best interest. But I'm curious how it's going to just come off, or how they're if the, what they'll change. I guess if anything, so. I think it'd be fine because I don't think the TV audience is as reactive and toxic as the gaming audience. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, like, yeah, there's assholes everywhere in the world, but like, people acted as if 
the world had ended when The Last of Us Part 2 came out. And I, I really don't think that game got a fair shake because of all the controversy surrounding it. Yeah, I, I, I had a great time. And I, I think I even mentioned this in maybe a different episode where we're talking about something else. I think it is interesting, though, with that game, how the thing that people were arguing about the most was the story, which is refreshing because usually it's like the mechanics of the game or the mm-hmm. game itself sucks. And it's like, no, that wasn't the issue. The game played basically like the first one with maybe some minor tweaks, but it was the story which people were like going nuts about, which I thought was a nice, I mean, <laughs> I thought it was stupid when people were arguing because the arguments were ridiculous to me, but it was a nice change of pace in that I, I, I guess you can be unhappy with the way it turned out, the story and stuff, but mm-hmm. the way people reacted as if it was like the room and I'm like, uh, yeah. no, it's not that mm. bad. Come on, like, let's behave a second here and actually talk rationally. Like, yeah, and then... What I didn't like about The Last of Us Part 2, I thought the game was way too long. The story overstayed its welcome, things like sure. that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, for sure, the thing that was the worst was the vitriol at some of the uh, actors and actresses in that game. Like, the motion capture mm-hmm. and the voice actors was just just abhorrent that how they got treated. Some of which who are still getting shit for that game which is insane so whoever gets cast in this second season i hope they have a strong stomach or like you said the tv audience is gonna not gonna be as horrible as the game audience you know what i would do if they <laughs> offered me a role which they won't because they're yeah. bastards um, <laughs> clearly clearly i would go what you want to pay me like a million dollars to be in a tv show yeah i'll take it wait you're saying people might be toxic well that's okay i'll be smart and not have a twitter account (laughs) (laughs) it's the only solution (laughs) yeah i'll just sit with my million dollars and not have twitter (laughs) seems perfect to me what could go wrong man Um, Uh, that's funny I, i uh I saw this great tweet about like uh, the worst part of The Last of Us is in this modern world mm-hmm. is the idea that everyone would be willing to take a vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who would have thought? And, and the, that person then followed it up like, I probably wouldn't take the vaccine ever because they don't have Twitter in that world and that seems a world worth preserving. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. Good, good. But yeah, it sounds like an awesome show. Uh, I'm like I said, I'm definitely gonna watch it. I just it's when I get around to it at some point. But yeah, it seems like generally, I'm happy that there's a a very not just a passable video game adaptation, but like a really solid one is what it sounds like well, for most people. Well, last thing I'll leave it on is as well. What I hope people take away from this is involve the creators. Yeah, exactly. You know. Because Neil Druckmann even directed an episode of this. Apparently, I oh. wrote it with them as well. Nice. Uh, and it was the guy. The other guy was the guy who made Chernobyl. Oh, yeah, which is a great show as well. So yeah, I, I never saw that one. Um, but I mean, don't don't break Yuji Nakar out of prison and have him write Sonic. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I don't know. That could be great after his latest prison sentence. <laughs> Sonic goes Sonic to jail. Sonic 3 is Yuji Naka fight, fighting Square Enix. <laughs> um, I would love to see that. <laughs> but yeah. But no, like, take lessons from this in that mm-hmm. don't take something and radically change it. We've all seen those adaptations where it's like, oh, we just want the name on the poster. Like, mm-hmm. we'll do our own thing once we've got the brand recognition, you know, like yeah. Resident Evil movies sure. and stuff like that. Look mm-hmm. at the source material. What do people like about it? Like, talk to the creators. What makes this world this world? Things like that. Yeah. Learn. <laughs> learn yeah, learn. Language. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, it is a balance, too, because you don't want to... I guess it depends on what the goal of the adaptation is. Like, on one hand, yeah, everything you just said, I completely agree with. On the other hand, or maybe to balance that, you can't do 100% fan service either, I feel like. No. You kind of have to, like... It, it, not necessarily surprise people, but like you have to just be mindful of all feedback, I guess is what I'm saying. If it's just 100% fan service, then it's like, well, that may not land either necessarily. I, I honestly believe this show, the intention was, let's make the last of a show. Like, not, mm-hmm. not the intention behind the show, but their plan probably was, let's make this show. We know we know we got a built-in audience of like <coughs> 5 million. Right? Yeah. But everyone who thinks this is a great story will recommend this to their parents and their friends mm-hmm. who don't have a PlayStation. 
yeah for sure you know and like i i could easily turn around and say to like my mother-in-law like oh you, you should watch that show but i'm not going to mm-hmm. say to her go you should go buy a playstation and play <laughs> the last of us you're gonna love it yeah <laughs> um yeah, what I'm also curious about too is I think they've pretty much said that there's not a Last of Us 3 game coming or at least not like anytime soon. So what I'm curious about is if they're going to just continue the story through the TV show, like past they the second said game. said season two and three is going to be the second game. Oh, wow. so that in a... So yeah, this, wow. it into okay. two seasons. So okay. That gives them, because you got to think they're probably not going to... Uh, best hbo doesn't do the year after year after year like there was sometimes two year gaps between sure. Game of thrones you know mm-hmm. um that probably buys them at most three to four years mm-hmm. yeah they got some time so that's a good point mm-hmm. so yeah. well good but nice. thumbs up give it a go definitely okay and then over to you to tell us about the history of the world part two <laughs> part two Yes. So in general, I'll say, uh, or I guess I'll ask really quick, Mel Brooks movies or fan. Have you seen probably most of them? I'm guessing I've seen, I think I've seen most of the main ones. Yeah. You you got an IMDB and there's like weird movies from the sixties. I know. Sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 So Mel Brooks for anyone who probably, who doesn't know, which would probably not be many people I'm guessing, but definitely, uh, well-loved creator of movies like Young Frankenstein, uh, yeah, History of the World Part One, of course, uh, Blazing Saddles, Spaceballs, Robin Hood, Men in Tights. I mean, all kinds of uh, crazy, ridiculous. I even liked uh, the Dracula movie you did with Le- Leslie Nielsen. Mm-hmm. Yep, did that yeah. one as well. So definitely all kinds of just great movies. Uh, but one of his, I would, I don't know, if, it's hard to say like which one's the best one, but the one that for sure I know gets like a lot of like quotes and stuff from is history of the world part one, which came out a little over 40 years ago. Mm. So for anyone who doesn't know, it's basically, it's, it's almost like a sketch comedy type of movie. Essentially. It's just like a bunch of skits back to back. And there is like a loose thread to some extent that goes through some of them, but it's essentially just different parts of world history, but of course told through like a comedic um, viewpoint and they're just cracking jokes and, it's classic Mel Brooks, just stupid humor, and and he he stars in it, of course, uh, with all kinds of uh, just different actors and stuff like that. So crazy set pieces like Roman Empire, cavemen, you know, all sorts of wacky stuff. And so the best, I, I feel like the funniest, not the funniest, but one of the funniest parts about that was the fact that he purposefully called it History of the World part one and then for 40 years just never made a sequel i don't know if that was intentional or not well, if he's ever talked about that it, don't they they say like come in in history of the world part two it's like yeah on ice and <laughs> yeah and like know. jews in space and like all these other ridiculous <laughs> things and so yeah i mean that was built into it to be fair um but i don't know if for whatever reason if he just like well I'm, actually now that i think about it has he ever done a sequel to a movie or like, have they all been original i guess he did something with space balls they did like a sequel cartoon there, yeah that's true kind of a cartoon but as far as like feature film goes i don't think he's actually ever done a sequel now that i think about it so no, but so it was just funny though that he just said he called it part one i'm assuming maybe he wanted to make more given that there was the end credits of that first I, one I, I honestly think it was just a joke that's that's what i'm he, thinking he, he, he's, he did yeah. it in space balls as well didn't he where he was like oh you mm-hmm. know space balls 2 the search for more money Right, and all the merchandising yeah. and all you know, all that stupid humor as well. Exactly. So even though if if a never a second one ever came out, it still of course stands on its own. It's not really like a continuous story per se. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was always you know a classic movie. But then recently, or you know last year or whatever, they announced History of the World Part Two was finally coming, and of course I think people were were happy in general to say like, oh wow, they're finally going to make one. But I was worried a little bit because in the era of these legacy sequel remake, whatever I'm like, all right, is, are they going to land it? <laughs> you know, what's going to happen. <laughs> I think the thing as well, my thought was how involved actually is Mel Brooks. Cause mm-hmm. like love the guy, but at the end of the day, he's like what? 95, 96. At, yeah. Almost a hundred at this point. <laughs> and even when I saw the trailer, like it was him sitting by a piano talking and then like all the sketches seemed to be, you know, your A to Z of modern comedians, right? Yeah, so 
Exactly. So, like, the, the whole gist of this, so first of all, it's not a movie. It's a limited uh, Hulu series of, what, eight episodes. I will say what was really neat, though, is how they released it. It doesn't really matter now that it's all released, but what they did was for four days in a row, two episodes per night, just like back to back, essentially. So if you were watching it along with it, I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. It's not like binge watching all at once, but it's also not like week after week. It was all just one week, but like a couple episodes a night. But obviously, it doesn't really matter now, I guess. So, um, but the whole point of it was more sketches of just different eras in history. And the big thing they were advertising in the trailer was a whole bunch of comedians. Like if you see the trailer there, it's like, boom, 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 boom. They're just listing a whole bunch of different people, which is great too. Um, and I will say the first few episodes I think are pretty solid. Like definitely, and I, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I, I, I had mentioned to you when I mess, uh, when I messaged you the other week in the second episode, I think you're really going to like it because it's parodying a sitcom slash. Well, I guess it's not completely a sitcom, a show that we've talked about before, but with a history sketch, of course. Um, so I won't spoil it. Uh, I want you to experience it when you, when you do, but I'm guessing Seinfeld. <laughs> I won't say anything. <laughs> I won't say what it is, but I think you'll enjoy it. And in particular, Carey, <laughs> no, that would be great, but it, it is not Drew Carey show. And there's a particular actor that shows up that we've also talked about. But once again, I'll let you experience it. Okay. Um, but in general, yeah, it's just more history sketches. But I will say this is good and bad because there's some sketches that like it just happens one time. It's like a one and done type of sketch, but then there's a few others that they carry throughout the whole series. Like it'll start mm. in the first episode and then like the next episode, it will be like, Oh, we're going back to here again. And it's a continuation. So th there's almost like multiple sketches that are continuing throughout the series, which in some cases that's good because there are some funny sketches like that. Like there's a civil war one, which is pretty good. But then there's a couple other that, frankly, after the first one, I'm like, all right, this these jokes aren't landing in this particular sketch. Mm -hmm. And I thought, like, okay, it's a one and done. But then the next episode, they, like, keep doing it. And so some of those sketches, I'm like, eh, they don't land as much. Um, it's, it's not, like, all bad, but just in, maybe it's just my personal taste. Just some of them weren't, like, super funny. But at, at the same time, I'm trying to think back to the first movie. There were a couple sketches that I was like, all right, they're fine. Nothing, you know, super crazy. Not like every sketch lands. But so there are a few of those here. But I think, like I said, what kind of makes it worse is, that, like, it gets drawn out over multiple episodes. So you might not like that if there's a sketch, you know, that you just don't yeah. gel with too much. Um, but as far as Mel Brooks's involvement, since you mentioned that, so... From what I can, at least from what I understand on IMDb, he's a writer and producer. I don't know how much. I don't know if that's just yeah. like they threw him a bone type of thing. <laughs> that's the thing. You don't really know, do you? Because like, mm -mm. if he was the sole writer of the entire show, you would know. And I think you can tell that he wasn't. I mean, you can look up. There are other writers and producers that's you can clearly look up. But you can kind of tell that that's the case. Yeah. And that's it. I kind of just... I know, as I said, it like let the guy fucking rest. But like, <laughs> I also just would love like pure more Mel Brooks, you know. Sure. Yeah, and you can tell though there is definitely there's definitely an homage to his type of humor, if not him directly, maybe writing a sketch or two. So you definitely feel that there, but it's not as strong as like your typical Mel Brooks movies that he used to do. Um, and then as far as like being in the show, he is briefly in it throughout all eight episodes, maybe no more than like a minute or two. He's not like mm -hmm. super in it. He's like a couple cameos, if you want to call it here and there, but nothing like a lot. It's really all of these other actors that are in it or comedians, actors. So the one thing I'll also say is, I've never wa really watched Nick Kroll before. Do you know who that is? The actor, comedian. I I'm sure if you looked it up, like you'll be like, "Oh, it's it's that guy." He's been, he's been in shows and movies before. Um, he's in this a lot, and I think he's probably one of the main people who is driving this show. And nothing against him personally. I'm sure he's a wonderful person. I just don't find him that funny. <laughs> like, yeah, I I'm looking at him, and I. 
he looks more like other comedians. <laughs> I do know. <laughs> <laughs> like he's been in a bunch of just like random stuff. I think he used to have a show on Comedy Central or something like that. He, look, he looks like if you put Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel in one of those face morphers. <laughs> Like apps, you know. It's I like, can what see that. Children look like. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. He has those yeah. characteristics. Uh, um, yeah, I don't think I've seen much with him in. I'm going to be honest. Looking at like his highlights. Yeah, and once again, like he has a couple of funny moments, but he's in like almost every episode and at least a couple mm. of sketches, and some land, but then a lot. I don't know if it's just his sense of humor or the way he delivers lines. He just like doesn't do it for me, <laughs> honestly. So that was a bit of a letdown in that sense. Um, I don't think he like brings down the show by any means, but he's definitely present. Like you will see him a lot in the show. <laughs> um, but then in general, though, there's other funny sketches. Like I said, there's a Civil War one. There's a few about. There's a lot about Jesus. Oddly enough, <laughs> there's a there's a yeah, few. <laughs> Mel Brooks loved joking about Jesus. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, there was parts of that, I think, before. But um, overall, I mean, yeah, it's eight episodes, 30 minutes. I mean, with commercials, it's even slightly less than that. So, I mean, you can knock this entire show out in like a few hours if you really wanted to. So it's I, th- I will give it a thumbs up. I- I'm not going to say it's I don't think anything could have lived up to the original one, to be honest, like unless maybe it was purely Mel Brooks, which it's not. <laughs> Honestly, like even History of the World Part One wasn't even probably not even in my my top five Mel Brooks movies. I think maybe it was for me just because I have like I don't for whatever reason I just watched it a bunch. I think because of family, yeah. it was always on. But I mean, we watched his other movies too. But for some reason, that one was just like I had seen it like a dozen times for some reason. So maybe it, for me, it was I guess. But I can understand that. Yeah, I don't think it's bad or anything. It's sure, wrong. sure. It's, it's rare to find a bad Mel Brooks movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, I always would have thought like they maybe would have done a sequel to Spaceballs, especially with like Star Wars being like right and stuff like that. Yeah, so, exactly. I, I'd like to watch this at some point just to see what it's like. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've not got big hopes for it. Mm-hmm. Like, you've told me it's like mildly funny and stuff. Mm-hmm. But then also that's a double-edged sword because there's so much content just out all the time that you're like, yeah. do I really want to like watch something that's okay? Yeah. You know? and that's, <laughs> yeah, no, I completely understand. And that's where I'm like, I think it is the first couple episodes I think are worth it. After that, it's more like it, like diminishing returns, I guess I'll call it, where they're like, yeah, there's some funny ones here, but it kind of like peters out a little bit. And I, And to be honest, I think... It's weird though, because like the first one was I don't know hour and a half or however long it was, mm-hmm. and this one, I mean, if you take out all the commercials and stuff, maybe two and a half hours of content, something like that, across all the episodes. So it's not like massively longer, but because it is a series, it kind of feels drawn out a little bit. Yeah, there's always endpoints, and you never feel like I. I get like it's weird. I'd be watching like a twenty minute show. And you're mm. like, oh, I don't know if I can watch another episode. <laughs> like, you're like, you're tired or whatever, right? Yeah. Whereas then at the same time, you'll watch a 40 minute one. No problem. But yeah. It, you don't feel it ramping down until the last five minutes, you know? Yeah, exactly. So they very easily could make another season. Uh, just the format of this. Yeah. concept really is just sketch comedy more than anything um whether they do who knows i don't think it's needed and I actually on that note when i was watching um i think I, I saw a trailer or a review of the show just to see like what other people were thinking and there was a top comment on some video that said i like this show better when it was called drunk history <laughs> which made me laugh because it's like i never yeah. watched i never watched that i i know what it is but apparently people are like saying that that was almost like a spiritual successor to history of the world, but with a little bit of a Mm. spin on it. And people were saying like, they kind of did it better. And it's, it's kind of one of those things we've also talked about before where like history of the world, I think inspired a lot of things that came after it. And now that they're trying to like recapture that original thing, it doesn't, work or it's not that it doesn't work and, yeah. exactly because so many other things now have kind of done it better so once again i i, I would give it a thumbs up but it, it's not 
it's not like spectacular. It's not like, oh my God, Mel Brooks yeah. triumphant return type of thing. It's more like it's worth a watch probably once. And then you really don't ever need to watch it again compared to like the first movie. I could go back and still watch that like today and, and laugh my ass off, you know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, check it out. It's on Hulu. Um, okay. If you can. And like I said, I think the first few episodes are worth it. And then in particular for you, that second episode. But once again, okay. I won't spoil it. I won't spoil it. Okay, how about this? Go watch the second episode only. And then that'll be all you need. <laughs> <laughs> so, I might, you know, like I might one day when I'm just laying in bed, mm-hmm. want to watch something for half an hour yeah. before I go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's long. a quick one. It's not, it's not easy, a... It's easy one to like not have to like sit up and pay attention to it. right you can just have it on the background or whatever it's nothing you know too crazy so yeah. um but yeah so anyways uh that's uh history of the world part two and uh partial thumbs up i guess i'll say but last of us uh definite thumbs up is what it sounds like so if you've seen either one of these let us know what you think and uh until next time we got some more games and shows to talk about so let us know what you think down below all right take it easy everyone bye